These are exciting times for the organization. Anytime you can acquire um, you know, talented football players, it helps make a little bit more progress moving forward. I'm sure you all have a lot of questions to ask me with regards to the draft. Uh, but first, I'd be amiss if I didn't say I'd like to thank a lot of people on the football operations side of it. I'm talking from the coaching staff to the personnel staff to the research staff. Guys have put in, you know, many hours, weeks, months, days in trying to get this thing right. And, I mean, that's what you do because at the end of the day, we're going to make a what's best decision for the Cleveland Browns moving forward. And with that, I'll take your questions. Johnson, has there been any kind of amending offenses with him? Well, I think I've, I've, I continually keep telling you all that, you know, Duke's a very talented football player. We see uh, a lot of stuff for Duke moving forward in the future with regards to him. You know, he's, he's a member of this organization moving forward. How have discussions been with him along the lines of things that have, you know, good? I mean, he knows, he understands the role that he's going to play within this offense. And, and that's what's important because Duke, everybody know, is a very talented playmaker. And I look forward to seeing him on the fields on Sunday. He kind of requested a trade. Does that change your strategy or philosophy at all regarding him? No. I mean, you know, again, you know, when you sit down with uh, Freddie, and the coaching staff, they see him as a vital part of this, uh, you know, this offense moving forward. He's, he's a good playmaker. You think he has to be convinced that he has a, a real, a significant role on this team? Well, I mean, when you say convinced, what does that mean? Well, I know that last <clears throat> year he was unhappy with the number of touches he got, especially in the second half of the year. So does he have to be, hey, yeah, you are important to us? You know, there's 53 guys on this football team, and it's about winning. And that's the sole objective is this thing moving forward is winning football. And is he a talented football player? Yeah. I mean, he's, a, he's a really good, and he's going to help this offense move forward. Has he uh, committed himself to being here for the mandatory minicamp? It's uh, in the, the mandatory minicamp. We haven't talked to he or his representatives about that. How about the, uh, the, the first minicamp that's coming up this week? Do you expect him here for that? Well, I always expect him here. It's it's voluntary, so you can't. I mean, that's part of the CBA. Clarify: Has he been in here since the workout started? In, in the building, no. Have you had a chance to, to communicate with him on the phone? Well, I've talked to his representatives, and I think he and Teddy, I mean uh, Freddie, have text back and forth with regards to that. You all want to talk about the draft? <laughs> Do you have a list of guys that you would? trade back into the first or try to trade back into the first round if they fell to whatever number in your head? Yeah, I mean, those are the scenario games that we'll begin to play on Monday and Tuesday of next week with regards to possibilities. Um, but I think what you have to do is you have to wait and see how that moment unfolds. And you always attempt to better yourself by getting good football players, and we'll, we'll play those scenarios. Talk to teams at the bottom of the first round before the draft starts to lay some groundwork or find out what it would take to move back in there? I think you always do that. You always do your due diligence and just see, you know, what's the possibility of going up or what's the possibility of going back. I think you have to play that year in and year out and be consistent with regards to that. Comforting to be able to kind of sit back this year a little bit and evaluate before having to take a pick. You can kind of look at the First? No, you know, I think the process is – we've always felt that the process is the same. Regardless of what position you're in, we're going to do our due diligence. We're going to turn over every stone, as we say, and we're going to go through the processes of building that draft board the same year in and year out, and it'll never change. John, what, uh, when you're going through the draft and you're deciding whether you want to move up or down the board and make those type of trades, what kind of metrics do you use in making those decisions, and what role does Paul D. Podesta – play in that decision-making process? Well, you know, when you make a decision, it helps to have as much information as you possibly can. So, again, we're going to have conversations with regards to that. So I think it is important to talk about scenarios, how they may unfold. But, I, you know, once you get into the moment of that draft, things move very quickly. So you better be ready to make those decisions very quickly. And hopefully you've worked out all the different scenarios that could possibly come up. Team trades that you've made. Just what type of role has Paul uh, had in that, in, in, as far as working with you and, and going through the, that process? Well, he always gives. I mean, he gives suggestions, and it's you know, and, and I thank him for that because, like I said, when you make decisions, you can't have enough information to make those decisions. What about 
this draft in terms of how you might use it to bolster the quarterback room? You meaning the depth of the quarterback class? Uh, uh, yeah, you have uh, Stanton under contract only through this year, and you have a guy you just brought in, of course, who has some age and uh, some experience. But are, are you looking pretty hard at adding a quarterback? Well, you look at all – I think you look at all positions in the draft, and then when you look at the quarterback positions, if you think that that player can contribute and compete within his position and help the organization move forward, you know what? We'll have a discussion. We'll talk about it. If we think it's that possibility, then we'll go acquire that player. How hard is it to find – from the standpoint uh, – you drafted uh, Murray when you were in Kansas City and then uh, then Hogan in Kansas City. How tough is it to see a guy uh, after uh, that first round tier and and uh, and make a good guess on whether he's going to be able to pan out? Well, hopefully you've, you've done enough research and it's an educated guess. At the end of the day, you know, you, sometimes you're going to you know, you're going to hit on some guys, sometimes you're not going to hit on some guys. Uh, probably the best hit but I think I've been a part of late down there would have been like uh, Matt Hasselbeck or a Kurt Warner or somebody like that. I mean, those are the hits and misses, and we've also had our misses. Can you comment on uh, being on prime time four times in this upcoming season and then twice more on, for all intents and purposes, national television? What does that say about the roster you've built so far? Well, um, I think it, it, it gives the – you know, I think the players get excited to play on primetime, as they say, primetime football. But I think it also gives the country a chance to see when we play home at First Energy, to see how passionate the fan base truly is and how exciting football is here in Cleveland. John, you talk about playing out these scenarios. How does that work? Is it like a mock draft kind of thing where you kind of go through, okay, here's what's going to happen, one, two, three. How do you No, we, you know what? We just we do hypotheticals. And then we just, you know, we ask, okay, what happens if this player here is, you know, what, what's, what, what do you think about this? This we, You know, you'll move the draft board around and eliminate some guys, and you say, how about if these three guys are here? You know, if we had to move up, what do you think it would cost? Little games like that. How long do you think that would take? Like, how long does that take to go through so many scenarios? Uh, probably – Three days. John, yeah, quarterback you did sign. Uh, he's got, you know, a distant relationship with Baker from uh, Big 12. Gilbert, is he just a camp arm? Is he a legit competitor for even as high as two on the depth chart? Well, I think the, um, you know, I think he's one of between the AAF between 40 and 50 players that signed the National Football League. Um, he has talent. He showed development and growth under Coach Spurrier. Um, he's got enough arm, arm talent. And then um, when you combine that with the toolage of the head coach, the offensive coordinator, and the quarterback coach, there's a chance that, you know, he, let's see some steps here moving forward. What are, what are the strongest areas in, in this draft? In this draft, I mean, everybody knows it's going to be the defensive line. Uh, that's what everybody's been talking about, and that's true. There is some depth here, but if you look at uh, the wide receiver position, I think there's depth uh, at all fronts on the, on the wide receiver position. I think there's depth at the running back position. I think there's depth at the uh, quarterback position as well. How about safety? Uh, you know what? This year's safeties have more depth to it than in years past. Is the line class so good that even at 49, you think you could get a, you know, a a guy who can come in and be a real contributor pretty soon in his career? You would hope so, you know, that, but that, again, that's one of those scenarios. You've got to just wait and see where you're going to pick, what unfolds, and, and then you have to wait to different options. In years past, it, when you're like around number 49, is your board pretty much you have a lot of players equally rated at that point? Um, to a certain extent, not real, not necessarily. I mean, the way you unfold it is normally there should be about 165 players on that board, um, and then you just kind of work through the the positioning of those players, and then you have to do what's best for the organization to determine which one is the best player. Can you characterize your level of desire to move up? I mean, being open to trading up is one thing, but are you really looking and seeking? to do that heading into this If I deem it will help the Cleveland Browns, I'll surely I'll do that if it helps the organization moving forward. But the compensation on the back end can't be like, you know, outland. It can't be outrageous. It's, it's got to work on both sides. Is there 
there are guys uh, you know that might come to you a little bit maybe in the back end of the, the first round that you're just going to have to have and that you're going to be super motivated to well i think it? you just got to wait and let that happen on draft day and see it how it unfolds yes sir you uh you didn't mention linebackers as a position of death in the draft are you okay with your the linebackers you got now or are you still looking around or what no, I think you know, uh, I, you know, the current guys that we have on on this uh, on, on our roster right now play a lot of football. I think there are some guys within this draft class uh, that are worthy of drafting at certain spots, and I think that's that's how you go about this thing. And then there's, you know, there's other avenues of acquiring football players as well. So you would depend on uh, the player who who might be available in the first round in a, in a trade up scenario, but. Um, that aside, how, how big a motivator is a fifth-year option in your mind to be able to get that? Well, there's an advantage to that. I mean, let's, let's make no mistake. Anytime you can get a fifth-year option on a good player, that always helps out. What do you think about the fact you already made some important trades in the Beckham trade and got rid of your first-round pick? Throw him out, just look at the draft picks you uh, have remaining. What's the overview, what, are you trying, what you're trying to get accomplished with the picks that you have remaining? Well, we're trying to get as many competitive football players uh, to help this roster move, you know, moving forward and help and contribute uh, for the 19th season. You can't have enough good football players. At the end of the day, I'd like all eight of them to be starters, but reality says that's not going to happen. You just want to try to get as many good competitive football players as you can. When you look at history and what it would take to move up from, let's say, 49 to whatever, 29 or whatever number that would be, and you look at what it's taken in the past, are you willing to give up like what te other teams have done for that? If there are certain players there that I deem that the value fits the, the player, yes. John, have you ever been a part of a draft where you drafted a kicker and the fact that your roster is so much better stock this year, does that increase the risk of that? No, I believe in, uh, in Green Bay we drafted a kicker. Um, it didn't work out too well, but uh, it's still, you know, he um, – I've been involved in that and was also been a punter we drafted too. That didn't work out too well either. Could, could you comment on the fact that you kind of have the luxury of all you've done, you signed 14 players and trades and all that. Uh, does that increase the ability to do that? To do what? To draft a kicker. No, I mean, if again, if he helps this organization moving forward and he's at the right value versus – what his what his abilities are? Why wouldn't you take a shot at it? We haven't talked to you since um, Eric Murray and uh, Morgan Burnett were acquired. Yeah. How do you see those guys fitting in uh, at safety, and and what does that mean for the position as you head into the draft? I think both are very you know um, talented football players. I think with regards to Morgan, I think over the years he's shown his ability to play the game of football. I think he's a nice fit into what Steve Wilkes is looking at. Again, with Eric Murray, Eric Murray can play both safety positions. He actually may play a little bit of like nickel, you know, nickel corner in, as well. And he's a phenomenal special teams player too. I mean, Burnett was, there were some injuries last year. He's used a little differently. Do you still see him as a starting strong safety? I do. Yeah, I'm assuming you don't move up in the first round. If, if you draft 49, do you draft for a position of need or do you draft best available player at that point? The question is, do I draft for best player available or for need? Uh, if, I don't know. You and I really don't know each other, but if you know my track record, I've always say best player available. John, you mentioned players contributing in 19, but a guy like Jeffrey Simmons maybe couldn't do that. Would that give you pause picking him or trading up to take him, something like that, or any player like that who maybe couldn't play? He's a, he's a phenomenal football player, and unfortunately he's, you know, he had an ACL injury uh, recently in January, I think. Um, you know, if he was there at 49, you may think about it, but you have to see what's best for the best for the organization moving forward. How do you kind of approach uh, evaluating a player like that? Well, I think what you do is you you look at his ability to play the game of football. Then I think you sit and talk to your medical staff and see how long it will actually take with regards to his recovery of that injury. And I think then you begin to digest the information you've had and see. Will is there enough enough factual information to make a prudent decision? Can you, um, what have you seen from Austin Corbett to make you think that he could step in at that right guard position? Well, I think there was uh, he was making growth 
in the 2018 season. I think every day when you see him uh, working at his craft, and uh, I will, I think that he's going to make tremendous strides here in the 19 season. And what he's going to do, you know, it's not given. Nothing's given in this thing. But he's going to sit and compete. But uh, I'm sure he's one of those guys that's going to stand up to the challenge. The way your roster stands right now, would you want to use all eight picks that you have left, or would you prefer fewer just because you don't have as many holes as you used to? I think that's one of those situations. Let's see when we get to the moment of the draft and see how it begins to unfold and watch that draft board unfold as we speak. And if we feel that you know, we'd like to acquire some extra picks going down the road, maybe we do something like that. Crossed your mind that uh, along with uh, Landry and Beckham at the front of the wideout core, that uh, it might be really interesting to add some uh, some juice uh, to the three uh, four spots. I think Callaway's got some juice, um, but it's you know what again if you're at that if you're in that position, regardless of what round you're out, and you think they can really help and help this organization not only in the immediate but in in the long term. Why wouldn't you go acquire a player like that if you deem him the be best player available? John, what do you think uh, Vernon does for you and, and the fact that he had uh, <clears throat> ankle injuries in the last two years? How did you guys assess that? No, I, you know, you can't. I think in today's football, you can't have enough really good pass rushers. And I think um, when you begin to acquire talented pass rushers, regardless if they're outside or inside, uh, that opens up avenues for other pass rushers on your team as well, because basically what it is is you got one-on-one -on -one matchups, and you, you can't have enough one-on-one -on -one matchups in this league today. And I think it's going to help everybody across the front four. No, I, you know, we talk, I talked to Joe, and he, he's, he's fine. Do you have any more clarity? Do you guys as an organization have any more clarity on OBJ's uh, participation in the voluntary offseason program and OTAs. Do you know what his plans are and if he's going to be sort of more of a part-time-ish participant all the way up until the mandatory minicamp? Are you guys going to try to talk him into being more full-time or where do you stand on that? Well, I mean, where I stand is I think any time that you have as an organization, you have a first-year coaching staff and you're installing new offenses and new defenses, it's good to be here. But let's remember the CBA was create, created this where it's a voluntary situation. I think he's an experienced enough player that um, he'll understand what he has to do to put himself in the best position and put this team in the best position. And that's how I look at this. A lot of positive hype around this team right now, more so than in recent years. How does that or does that impact the locker room? And also, does that impact young incoming players? The type. I mean, that's what it is. Football's played in the fall, the last I've seen. Now you got to go to training camp. And you got to earn the respect that everybody's talking about. And how do you do that? You have 53 guys with the single mindset and the collectivism of driving this thing forward. And that's where it is. Games are won and lost in the fall. And that's, that's how you're going to approach this thing. I mean, I've always lived by the mantra 1 0. You know, it's one game at a time. And you have to live that. What are your um, impressions of Draymond Jones as a prospect? And um, is there anything you can tell us about the interaction go well when he was here uh, for the pro day, the local pro day? He was here and the uh, um, great kid. Um, you know, the, um, the defensive line coaches put him through about 15, 20 minute drills and you saw all the explosive movement that you had heard about. Um, when you combine his ability to play the game of football and the person, uh, you couldn't be more happy to have a player like that on your team. I mean, I thought he did an outstanding job. The only position that you haven't acquired pretty much this year is at the cornerback position. That's wrong. Deep snapper. No, go ahead. <laughs> um, and it wasn't from lack of trying. I mean, you have two expressed interest in two veteran free agents uh, during the course of the offseason. Um, so where do you cornerback? You're, are you satisfied with your depth there or not? Well, you, you know, this is the National Football League, and the game has evolved and changed over the last five to ten years. And you can't have enough cornerbacks on your team to move this thing forward. 
uh, because of the way the NFL has gone in terms of the throwing component of it. Um, so we're exploring all opportunities uh, at the cornerback position. Um, and if we think it's going to help this organization moving forward, then we'll, we'll try to acquire a cornerback. Do you think the team has a, a tight end core? The depth of the, uh, the tight end position right now? I really like it. I mean, I, I, I like um, I like I like all of all. I mean, there's four of them right now together, and they're very talented individuals, and they all will serve different roles in this thing. But I think as you watch them work together, they're they're starting to get familiar with each other, and you know, you're watching. You know, what I want to do is wait till training camp comes and then really assess what that thing's all about. Because why make decisions, you know, now in shorts? Let's make decisions when pads get on. Joku is so young still that uh, you kind of uh, grade him against the curve. Of he's, uh, he's still only 22, 23, whatever he is. No, he's, he's a very young man with a lot of talent, and he's got a very workmanlike attitude, and he loves the game of football, and you know, he still has a high ceiling here. I, I know you always want to get better at every position, but uh, are there some areas that you think you're a little thin? I think we're thin at all positions. I mean, I want to be able to just fortify that thing as much as I can. Um, you know, more thin than others? Uh, more thin than others. You know, as, as I look at this thing, um, we're beginning to build some more competitive depth uh, at, at all the positions on this team, and I think we will continue to do that as we move forward, and we'll continue to do that even after, even after the draft takes place. Uh, Kareem Hunt integrating himself sort of into the team now that you've got a lot of other players in the building and most of the other guys around. How, how's that all going? I think Kareem's done it. I mean, he's done a heck of a job. He, I mean, he's been working his fanny off in the building. He's also been working himself. I'm, I, I couldn't be happier how hard he's working in the building. I couldn't be happier how hard he's working out of the building. Um, and that's all you can ask for him. He's, tr he's committed to doing the, the proper steps here in getting this thing moved forward. Thoughts on Chad Thomas? I mean, we didn't see a lot of him last year. He's a guy you drafted pretty high. What do you expect from him going into the season? What do you think he can bring uh, to that defensive line? I think Chad's a very talented football player. Again, um, usually guys in the first year to the second year make exponential, you know, strides and growth here. And, and I, I see him, you know, getting a lot of playing time this year. I can see him getting some rotational playing time and, and really developing. And they're a really good football player. Look at the schedule with all those primetime games, especially front-loaded like that. Is there a key to having your team prepared to handle that? I mean, the different times and the different schedules and the short weeks. You know, I mean, Freddie's a new coach. Is there some advice you can help him with? I would think stay consistent. Stay consistent with how you approach each game. Stay consistent in your routine uh, moving forward. And make sure there's attention to detail in terms of how you address each one of these games week in and week out. Don't look too far ahead. I mean, yeah, too far ahead and concentrate at the task at hand. And that's that first, you know, that's that first game. Let's concentrate on that task. The yeah. <clears throat> return specialist, you, you signed a really interesting story. Hasn't played in a while. Um, it was, was the signing more out of curiosity to see this guy? Or did you feel that you wanted to bring in a return specialist sometime this offseason? Well, I think it, it first starts with the physical traits that he displayed um, to Alonzo Highsmith, and then we brought him up here after to the recommendation of Alonzo, uh, and then we got a chance to see him for ourselves, and you could see all the explosive movement stuff that Alonzo was talking about. Then when you watch him field kicks and punts, you're going, okay, he can he can do this kind of stuff. Now he hasn't played in a couple of years, but it won't be from lack of determination because it's a very determined young man. And yeah, it'd be a great story if it happens, but he's got to come and show that, you know what, he deserves to be here. Um, I couldn't be happier for the kid moving forward to take, getting the shot to play in the National Football League. Is it the goal of you to address return specialists? Well, you'd like to find some type of return specialist to move this thing forward. And you're always looking for those guys to, again, create that competition. Probably your finishing touches on due diligence on a guy like Jeffrey Simmons. Are you completely comfortable uh, with the off the field stuff that, that he brings to the table? Well, you know, we had um, Jeffrey came in for a visit, and you know, I had a chance to sit down with him, talk about the past, talk about the steps he's taken at Mississippi State over the course of his career at the school. Um, 
So what we're going to do, if it's the possibility he's there, we're going to sit and talk about it as an organization and, and, and do the best, make the best decision moving forward and make sure that everybody's comfortable with that decision moving forward if it happens. An isolated decision, or you, do you have to make it in the context of that you already have Kareem Hunt on your roster? No, I, I understand that. I think you have to. It's a case by case basis, and I think you you sit there and you begin to let let's understand everything involved here moving forward. So we'll make that decision. You know, we'll see if it happens. We'll you know we'll see and see what that decision is all about.